So this is Westminster Hall, isn't it? But they'll be. Uh, I think they're going to walk with uh, the yes. gun carriage. I yeah, think, walk behind the up car to the Abbey, which is very close by. It's, it's all very close. But I think in about ten minutes, the gun carriage is due to start making its way to the Abbey. But Prince in a Harry way, you, well. you have yeah, you have. Um, and Peter Phillips on the right. Harry not in uniform. Interestingly, he was able to wear his uniform for the final vigil. Do you think? Grandchildren. Do you think it's hard for him, or do you think he just doesn't care at this point because oh, it was no, his decision? He, oh no, he cares. He cares. I think he. But you know, there has to be. I'm afraid there has to be a little bit of pain for Harry in terms of what he loses when you quit the royal family and you quit royal duty. Then he becomes like you know. To be clear, every veteran in Britain, no one wears a a uh, a uniform. You only wear it if you're a serving member of the armed forces or if you're an, a, a working royal who gets an honorary title. So that's the criteria. That's why he's not wearing one. Um, so I think that he has to accept that that's part of what he's lost. Uh, but will he like it? No, he'll, I'm sure he'll find it very upsetting. And I'm sure a lot of people might think, well, he served two tours of Afghanistan. He should be allowed to wear it. But again, just to clarify, no veteran of Afghanistan so, who's not still serving would be able to wear a uniform. It, it was his choice. He chose to step away, right. and with that choice came changes in yeah. his life. And and I always think of the moment when he said to Oprah Winfrey, "My father is trapped, and my brother is trapped." Yeah. And imagine how painful those words would be. Here's here's um, well, the King Consort two Camilla kids, well, George and, and Charlotte. So the, what yes. a moment for these two yes, kids. Yes, amazing. Both very young Those children, of course, and they're Princess now part of this extraordinary procession. Indeed. And you'll have Sophie Wessex and Meghan Markle, uh, the Duchess of Sussex. They'll be in the car together, I believe, in that. So we are also told at 10.35, and it's now 10.36 here London time, the coffin would be placed on the carriage, yeah. which I assume is happening right now behind closed doors, and then they will bring it out for the royal procession, which is not very long, the first procession. It goes from the Palace of Westminster, which is Parliament, basically, and then goes over to Westminster Abbey. And if you've Princess, been to London, it's very close. Princess Beatrice is yes, there right there on the right. husband, Eduardo. And I think Eugenie in front with her husband, Jack. Uh, tough time for them. You know, you forget these people are part of a real family and they've been really mourning the Queen. Mm -hmm. This was their grandmother, uh, someone they loved very dearly and they were very close to. And having to grieve in public like this, you know, we all remember the scenes of William and Harry after Diana died, having to walk behind her coffin in public in front of the world's eyes. And it's the same for the members here, I think. I couldn't even imagine having to do this in public. So I think sometimes it's worth just reminding ourselves this is a real family. They're not some soap opera drama. These are real people right, they lost who are their genuinely mourning somebody that was loved to them all. Yeah. Mm -hmm.